Welcome to Fanfiction Audiobook. American Comics. My luck is a hundred million points better. Chapter 61. After explaining the work at hand, Modu left. Supreme Mage, I still have something to do, so I will leave first. If there is anything you don't understand, the king will tell you. Modu said. Go. Luo Bai nodded in response. After he left, Luo Bai felt a headache looking at the thick stack of information in his hand. He knew that after becoming the Supreme Mage, he would definitely conduct a comprehensive study on Kamataj, but he did not expect that there would be so much information. No wonder Dr. Strange spent most of his time reading books after becoming the Sorcerer Supreme. There are so many books about Karmataj. These materials are as thick as books. Seemingly seeing his distress, Wang stepped forward and explained, Kamataj has been around for a long time. It may take you some time to understand the Supreme Mage. But you can ask me many things, and I will help you answer most of them. Doubts. Although it was the first time he met Wang, Luo Bai, who understood the plot, trusted him very much. Then I'll trouble you, Wang. Luo Bai said. Wang waved his hand and said, this is what I should do. Do you have anything else to explain? Luo Bai nodded and replied, it's true. Take me to places like the temple and the magic weapon room. Wang said nothing and took Luo Bai through the gate of the temple. As he walked, the king explained, each temple has a temple protector, and their duty is to protect the temple they guard. The original temple protector of the New York temple was the ancient one, and now it is temporarily guarded by Master Daniel. The protector of the London temple is currently Master Silesia, and the protector of the Hong Kong temple is me. Before becoming a librarian, Wang was indeed a protector of the Hong Kong temple. This is not surprising to Luo Bai. Supreme Mage, do you have any thoughts about the temple guardian mage? Just as he was thinking about it, Wang suddenly asked. Luo Bai didn't say anything, but was thinking. In fact, he knew very well what the king meant. Now that Luo Bai has become the supreme mage, he must protect the temple. This means that unless there are special circumstances, he will basically stay in the temple to guard it. Certainly. Luo Bai also made this mental plan, after all, he has now become the supreme mage. It's impossible to live in the villa and not care about anything like before. Thinking of this, Luo Bai replied, I will guard the New York temple for the time being. After all, I don't know much about Kamataj. The previous arrangements of the ancient one master should not be changed for the time being. I will make arrangements after I understand it clearly. Quote. After all, New York is the most chaotic place. The other mages probably can't handle a lot of chaos. Luo Bai's best choice is to guard this place. Okay, this is the New York temple. Wang said. While they were speaking, the two had already arrived at the New York temple. Soon, a mage came over. When he saw him, the king greeted him and began to introduce. Master Daniel, this is the current supreme master. Master Luo Bai. Daniel shouted respectfully, supreme mage. Then he began to look at Luo Bai, with a bit of surprise and astonishment in his eyes. It seemed that Daniel was so surprised that he forgot that this was not polite. Seeing him like this, Luo Bai smiled and said, Master Daniel, you seem to be curious about me. Only then did Daniel realize his rudeness and quickly explained, I'm very sorry, Master Supreme. I didn't mean to be rude to you, but I was a little surprised. Why are you surprised? Luo Bai asked friendly. Daniel smiled, a little embarrassed to say, you look very young. Luo Bai guessed what he would say. After all, Luo Bai is indeed the youngest among the great mages. With such appearance and age, it is normal for Daniel to be surprised when he becomes the supreme mage. Besides, Luo Bai rarely stayed in Kamataj, so most mages didn't know him, let alone seen his strength. Daniel would be surprised to be understood. But anyway, Luo Bai is also the supreme mage now, so it's a bit rude to say such things to him. So Wang was very surprised and rebuked. Daniel, this is the supreme mage. You can't be so rude. I'm sorry, I was just too surprised. Daniel apologized again. But Luo Bai smiled and replied, I understand your surprise. With my age and qualifications, it is really surprising to become the supreme mage. Although Dr. Strange's qualifications are not very high, he encountered the Domu invasion as soon as he became the Sorcerer Supreme. 
He drove away Domu and proved his strength. Although it seems that the wizards of Kamataj are all kind at present, it does not prove that everyone has no idea about the position of supreme wizard. Thinking of this, Luo Bai felt that he might also need to show his strength, so as to be able to stabilize the mages of Kamataj. After all, strength is always the only criterion for testing. Thinking of this, Luo Bai smiled and continued to ask, How long has Master Daniel been learning magic? Daniel smiled and replied, I almost forgot, 30 or 40 years. I can't remember exactly. Luo Bai nodded and said, Master Daniel must have a very deep understanding of magic. Maybe we can communicate when we have time in the future. But now I want to visit the temple more, okay. Of course, I'm more than happy to show you the way. Can I show you the second floor first? Daniel asked. Luo Bai nodded, and then followed Daniel to the stairs. There is a huge amount of stairs in the center of the New York Temple. You can go to the second floor by walking up this staircase. As the leader, Daniel walked up the stairs first. After he went up the stairs, Luo Bai and Wang walked up. As soon as Luo Bai walked up the first step, Daniel noticed something was wrong. Because the originally good stairs suddenly started to move on their own. Right. You heard that right, you just move by yourself. Just like an elevator, moving upwards one floor at a time. As an archmage, it is impossible for Daniel not to know why. This is space magic. Is it Luo Bai, the newly appointed supreme mage? Etc. At such a young age, has he already mastered magic to this extent? Daniel was confused. In fact, Luo Bai could understand his confusion. After all, there are not many mages in Kamataj who can use space magic flexibly. In fact, Kamataj's mage combat power is not particularly high. In the plot, Cassius can only use it because he has absorbed the power of darkness, so being able to use space magic is already very powerful in Karmataj. Because of this, it is very easy to show off in front of these archmages. Looking at Daniel's confused expression at this time, Luo Bai knew that this wave of pretense had a good effect. When several people took the elevator to the second floor of the temple, Daniel didn't even react. It was Luo Bai who reminded him, here we are, Master Daniel. Take us to visit. Only then did Daniel come back to his senses. At this time, his eyes looking at Luo Bai were very clear and admiring. Okay, Supreme Mage, please follow me this way. Daniel said, and then walked to the front to lead the way enthusiastically. Seeing him leaving, Wang whispered in Luo Bai's ear and asked, do we have to go upstairs like this? Luo Bai shrugged and said, I don't want to either, but I am the new supreme mage after all. I have to show my strength to convince these senior mages. Wang nodded to express his understanding. I know, I just thought the way you went upstairs was cool. Luo Bai smiled and said, I'll show you something cooler next time. As soon as he finished speaking, everyone heard a crisp voice. It sounded like glass breaking. Not waiting for everyone's reaction. A red cloak flew in front of Luo Bai, blocking its way. Luo Bai was stunned. Wait, isn't this the ancient artifact, the levitation cloak? Just as he was thinking about it, the king's voice sounded in his ears. It seems that this artifact has chosen you, the supreme mage. You know, it has been placed here for an unknown period of time, and it has never chosen its owner. You are really lucky. Levitation cloak, magic artifact. It is said to be an ancient artifact and one of the most famous clothing and equipment. Luo Bai knew about this cloak. It not only allows people to float in the air, but also allows them to participate in battles according to the owner's wishes. It can even protect the wearer from certain physical and magical attacks. Of course, it can also change its appearance. The most important thing is that it has autonomous consciousness. To put it simply, the levitating cloak will choose the one it is satisfied with to become its master. Obviously, it has chosen Lu Bai now. In fact, Luo Bai was still a little curious the moment he saw the floating cloak appear. After all, in the original plot, it chose Doctor Strange as its master, and it became Doctor Strange's exclusive prop. Unexpectedly, the cloak chose him now. Is this the charm of the top power of luck? Supreme Mage, it seems that this cloak likes you very much. Just as he was thinking about it, Daniel spoke. Luo Bai came back to his senses, looked at the floating cloak and responded, it seems that I am quite lucky. 
As soon as he finished speaking, the floating cloak flew over and draped it over Luo Bai's body. Then it became as quiet as an ordinary cloak and made no more movements. Seeing this, Luo Bai continued, Okay, let's continue to visit the second floor. Daniel nodded and continued to lead the way. There are many rooms on the second floor of the New York Temple, including study rooms, bedrooms, etc. Of course, what attracted Luo Bai the most were the various magical instruments placed on the second floor. These windows display various magic items from the multi-universe. This is the Dragon Fang Sword, this is the Axe of Angaram. And this is the Cosmic Cauldron. Daniel introduced them one by one. Luo Bai was stunned, looked at one of the objects that looked like a holy grail and asked, is this thing called the Cosmic Cauldron? Yes. Daniel replied. Why is it called this name? What does it do? Luo Bai asked, then picked it up and observed it. Daniel on the side explained, it is an artifact used by mages to predict the future and reveal the secrets of the universe. Mages usually need to use spells to activate it, but there are very few mages who can use it well. Because predicting the future is not that easy. Daniel was explaining, and the next second he saw that Luo Bai had already used it. For a moment, Daniel was stunned. No, he hasn't said what the spell is yet. Why did Luo Bai start to activate? Somewhat puzzled, Daniel couldn't help but ask the king on the side. Wang, have you told him the activated spell? Wang shook his head and said, no. Then how did the supreme mage activate the cosmic cauldron? Daniel asked. Wang frowned and replied helplessly, this ghost knows it. Daniel. The two fell silent. At this time Luo Bai had finished the trial. The conclusion drawn is that there is no time rough stone that is easy to use. The function of the cosmic cauldron is not like a time stone that can directly show you the future. It is more like a prophetic magic weapon that can predict the future. No wonder Ancient One didn't use this magic weapon much, but gave it to other mages. But for ordinary mages, this magical weapon is indeed very good. Thinking of this, Luo Bai put the magic weapon back to its original position. When he turned around, he realized that both Daniel and Wang had confused expressions on their faces. Luo Bai was a little strange and couldn't help but ask, why do you all have this expression? At this time, Wang Kai finally asked, do you know how to use this thing? I don't know. Luo Bai shook his head and said, this is also my first time seeing this thing. Then how do you know the spell? Wang asked again. Luo Bai answered very seriously, you guessed it. What the hell, guess. In an instant, Wang and Daniel opened their eyes wide at the same time. Magic spells, are they so easy to guess? Wang couldn't help complaining. Luo Bai didn't say anything, he just looked at Wang's shocked expression and couldn't help but think. With the blessing of luck, isn't it easy to guess the, password? I also guessed the spell in Agamotto. Certainly. He just thought about it and said nothing more. After completely visiting the temple, Luo Bai continued to speak. Okay. I almost understand the situation of the New York Temple. Master Daniel, I have already planned to protect the New York Temple in the future. The meaning of his words was obvious. Daniel also said very wisely. Next, the New York Temple will trouble the Supreme Mage. I will leave first. Daniel said and left. Seeing him leave, the king asked, Do you need me to do anything else, Supreme Master? Luo Bai shook his head and responded, It's not necessary for the moment. I will go to the training ground at 6 o'clock tomorrow morning. You go and do your work first. Thank you, Wang. You are too polite, Master Supreme. Wang said, and then left the New York Temple. After the two left, Luo Bai walked into the study and looked through the books in the study and the information handed over by Modu. Since Luo Bai is now very proficient in time magic, he can already use time to accelerate reading and learning. There was a wall full of books and information, and it only took Luo Bai less than half an hour to read it. After reading it, Luo Bai had a general understanding of the temple and the magic circle. Each supreme mage will integrate his magic with the magic circle that simulates the earth. In this case, no matter where the person is, the soul is. The supreme mage can feel the situation on the earth immediately and monitor everything about Kamataj. Integrating the magic circle is not very difficult. Luo Bai succeeded after trying it once. A successful connection is equivalent to Luo Bai owning a simulated planet. 
As long as he wants, he can feel and observe everything currently happening on the earth at any time. Of course, not all places can make perfect observations, and observations may be hindered in some places. After all, the magicians of Kamataj are not the only ones on earth who can do magic. At present, the only city where Kamataj is located can be clearly observed and completely unhindered. This is understandable, after all, Kamataj is the center of the magic circle. The closer to the center the better the observation. After establishing the connection with Kamataj, Luo Bai had a plan in mind, which was to learn the Book of Darkness. Even though the earth seemed quite peaceful before, in fact, the peace of the earth all comes down to the Ancient One. As the most powerful mage on earth, the existence of Ancient One has actually shocked many bosses. But now that the Ancient One is dead, it won't be long before this news spreads throughout the universe. This also means that the earth will soon become uneven. The timeline of the universe has long been changed due to Luo Bai's arrival, so Luo Bai cannot believe the timeline in his memory. He needs to be prepared to deal with the next crisis that may occur on the earth, and the best way is to improve his power. Thinking of this, Luo Bai took out the dark divine book sealed by himself, and then opened it to study. Due to the soul that had been trained for a long time before, although the corrosive effect of the dark god book, on Luo Bai is still there, it is not as strong as it seemed at first. After roughly reading through the Book of Darkness, Luo Bai almost understood the contents. The magic in the Book of Darkness is roughly divided into six major types. They are how to enter the evil dimension, how to become a vampire and a werewolf, how to control human will, how to summon Scythorn, how to absorb spiritual energy, and how to absorb dark power. The magic here is very extreme, and if he learns some magic, he will definitely be out of control. So Luo Bai chose two relatively, peaceful, magics, how to absorb spiritual energy and how to absorb dark power. These two magics actually have a certain connection. To put it simply, their practice methods are almost the same. And their practice methods are also very simple and straightforward. To put it bluntly, they teach you spells so that you can learn to absorb the power of darkness. And these dark powers are not limited to Scythorn, it all depends on how the user uses it. Simply put, as long as you learn all the dark forces are powerful enough. In every dimension, you can basically absorb dark power. After understanding it, Luo Bai opened the mirror dimension and started trying it. Since Luo Bai has a very deep foundation in magic, he quickly mastered the method and began to absorb dark power. At the same time, Domu in the dark dimension. Mephisto and others in the demon space. At the same time, I felt something was wrong. How do you feel? Someone robbed your home. At the same time that Luo Bai learned to absorb the power of darkness, powerful dark power began to flow into his body uncontrollably. This force is huge, and it rushes in like a rough sea in an instant. This forced Luo Bai to temporarily stop absorbing and begin to adapt to this power. To be honest, Luo Bai was a little confused just now. It was obviously the first time for him to learn the Book of Darkness, and he had just learned to absorb the power of darkness. But at the same time he learned. He felt as if he had been pressed on some unknown switch. At that moment, he absorbed a lot of dark power at the same time. The dark power comes from all directions and various dimensions, and is so powerful that it is beyond control. Even if Luo Bai continued to absorb it, he would doubt whether his current body could still carry this huge power. Although Luo Bai can also understand. Dark power is difficult to control to begin with, let alone Luo Bai absorbing so much dark power from all dimensions in just an instant, so it is normal for him to feel a little uncomfortable. Fortunately, after some adjustments, Luo Bai quickly integrated this power. After recovering, Luo Bai tried to absorb the dark power again. This time he had a little more control and didn't dare to be as reckless as the first time. But he didn't know if the goddess of luck was too favoring him. Luo Bai could feel that the dark power was still flowing into his body uncontrollably. In an instant, his body was once again filled with dark power. And at the same time, as the master of the dark dimension, Domu can clearly feel that the dark power in his dimension is being absorbed again. At this time, Domomu was very irritable. There is no end, flickering in his dark dimension once or twice. What do you think of his dark dimension? The power is something you can absorb if you want. Oh, 
Here we go again. It's really annoying. Duomu cursed. In fact, Domomu doesn't care about giving others the power of the dark dimension, because while giving others power, he can also control that person's soul, thereby completing all his purposes. But only if he takes the initiative to give it. Obviously things are different this time. The power of the dark dimension was not given to him, but someone was actively absorbing it, and the source was still on the earth. Being able to actively absorb the dark power in his dimension proves that someone on earth has mastered the method of absorbing the dark power. But this shouldn't be the case, but this is the dark dimension. Absorbing dark power across dimensions. The ancient one is dead. Just with the poor magic skills of those mages on earth. Duck and they absorb dark power across dimensions. Duomu felt strange, but he was not in a hurry. After all, do you really think that the power of his dark dimension is so easy to absorb? Since you have absorbed his power, then hand over your soul. The soul that comes to your door. Then become my believer and fall into the dark dimension. Domu roared. He controls the dark power in his own domain, and wants the, earth, mage, who has absorbed his dark power to become his disciple. He wanted to trace the consciousness of the earth mage through the power of darkness, and bewitch the earth mage to completely degenerate into his slave. But at this moment, Domomu felt another dark force collide with him. That dark force seems to come from hell, it's Mephisto, the lord of hell. No, it was fine. Why did he suddenly appear? Could it be that he also took a fancy to the soul of this earth mage? Domomu thought to himself. At this time, Mephisto also felt the power of Domu. Mephisto. Demons from extra dimensions, also known as Hell Lords. Mephisto was also very angry after feeling that the dark power of the Hell Space was absorbed. How could Mephisto accept the initiative to absorb the power in his space without permission? Since you have absorbed it, you have to pay a price and dedicate your soul. So, Mephisto planned to turn the human who absorbed his power into his disciple. The two signed a contract and asked the man to dedicate his soul. But when he tried to control the man's consciousness through the source of power, Mephisto felt an obstacle. It seems that, Domu from the dark dimension is doing the same thing at this time. Mephisto was stunned and couldn't help but mutter, Domu. Did he also take a fancy to this person's soul? Mephisto knows very well that in the multi-universe, the weak has always been the strongest, and he may not have a chance of winning in a fight with Domomu. So after feeling Domu's power, Mephisto chose to retreat, and he temporarily gave up the man's soul. After feeling Mephisto's retreat, Domomu was obviously very satisfied. He is just a little hell lord, how dare you compete with him for followers? Domomu thought to himself, trying to invade consciousness again. But at this moment, Domomu felt hindered again. Domomu. No, how much dark power has this guy absorbed? Are they all vying for his soul? I want to see who it is this time. Just as Duomumu was thinking, the next second he felt a familiar force. Dot dot dot. Sethorn. The Book of Darkness, is so famous. Even Domomu has absorbed dark energy from it to make himself stronger. How could he not know who Sithorn is? That's the creator of the, Book of Darkness, and the origin of all black magic. He's a big daddy. Although Sithorn was forced to exile to other dimensions a long time ago. But he's just gone, not dead. Who knows when he will come back again. So when he perceived Sithorn's power, Domu was obviously stunned. He did not dare to move forward, because once he moved forward, it would mean that he would compete with Sithorn for believers. To be honest, the risk is quite high. After all, no one has seen Sithorn's full power. Even though he had studied the, Book of Darkness, and absorbed Sithorn's power, the power he absorbed was insignificant to Sithorn. And not just him, the Hell Lord Mephisto also absorbed Sithorn's power. It can be seen that Sithorn is very powerful, and the chance of winning if he really wants to snatch Damumu is not great. But Duomu was unwilling to give in. The power of his dark dimension was inexplicably absorbed by someone, and he couldn't take that person's soul. This is not fair. Not fair. Just when Duomu was struggling, another force came out and blocked him. Different from the power of black magic, it is a holy golden power. It's white magic, it's actually the trinity god Wei Shandi. Ah. Did Emperor Weishan also take a fancy to this human mage, and gave him a blessing to become a disciple? Quote question mark question mark question mark question mark quote. 
At this moment, Duomu was completely confused, and several questions popped up in his mind. No, can anyone tell me who this mage is? So many ancient gods want to accept him as a disciple. Is there anything special about him? You ancient gods, can't you stay in peace and contentment? Duomu cursed. Because of his anger, the entire dark dimension has now become extremely riotous. Although he is indeed not short of this believer, he is really unwilling to do so. What's more, the fact that this earth mage can be favored by many ancient gods proves that there must be something in his soul. This made Domu even more determined to conquer Luo Bai's soul. But now he can't join the fight. Competing with so many ancient gods, he has no chance of winning now. I originally thought that if the ancient one died, he would be able to devour the earth without restraint. Unexpectedly, ancient one would take on such a disciple. He is going to devour more planets and turn those planets into dark dimensions to increase his power. Sooner or later, his soul will be mine. Duomu roared angrily, and left the stage while roaring. At this time, a hell lord quietly broke through the defense. Mephisto. I just want to collect a soul. I can't do it. I really can't do it with so many ancient gods. Luo Bai had no idea that the ancient god, the god of dark dimension, and the lord of hell were competing for his soul. He just closed his eyes and continued to absorb the dark power pouring into his body. He didn't stop until he was sure that his body could no longer carry any more dark power. Because of this first experience, Luo Bai adjusted very quickly this time. All the dark power was quickly absorbed by him. At the moment of absorption, Luo Bai's pupils turned black and red. As his mood calmed down, his pupils gradually returned to normal. This power. Luo Bai muttered in surprise, then looked at his body. He feels surprised because he can feel how powerful he is. This feeling is difficult to appear when practicing white magic. Although Luo Bai could feel that he was making progress every day before, the improvement was very weak. After mastering the time stone, he indeed felt that his strength had been greatly improved. But compared to now, it's not a concept at all. In just half an hour of practicing black magic, Luo Bai's strength has skyrocketed. If not everyone likes black magic, even the ancient one would have to borrow a little bit of the power of black magic. I can only lament that it still gives too much. Although black magic is good and can make people stronger, Luo Bai also knows the meaning of, enough is enough. For now, that's about it. It's not too late to practice again when the soul and mind are stronger. So, Luo Bai started his soul journey again. This soul journey was very short, because the king came at 6 o'clock in the morning. Supreme Mage, you have to go to the training ground. Wang reminded. Luo Bai adjusted his condition and walked out of the study. After passing through the stone door of the temple, he entered Kamataj. On the way to the training ground, Wang took the initiative to ask, Supreme Mage, are you still used to staying in the temple? Is there anything that needs to be added? Luo Bai shook his head and replied, it's good. If there is anything missing, I will get it myself. It's not just a casual matter for a mage to take something. Wang understood, so he didn't ask any more. He just reminded, there are quite a lot of mages coming today, including temple protecting mages and mages practicing outside. There are also several mages with whom the ancient one had a good relationship who have gone to the training ground. Are you all here? Luo Bai was stunned and couldn't help complaining, so many people are here. Wang shrugged and replied, everyone wants to see what the new supreme mage looks like, so it's not surprising that so many people come. That's true. Luo Bai nodded to express his understanding. Just as he was about to ask more questions, he felt something strange. Someone broke into Kamataj. With the magic circle around, normally few people can break into Kamataj easily. Of course, if the intruder also knows magic, that's a different matter. So obviously, the person who broke into Kamataj is also a mage. Wang also felt something unusual about the magic circle, and he spoke anxiously, Supreme Mage, someone broke into Kamataj. I feel it too. Luo Bai replied with a frown. As soon as he finished speaking, he heard Wang mutter, strange. I just felt abnormal energy fluctuations, why can't I feel it now? It seems that this mage is very powerful. Luo Bai explained. Then what should we do? Should we gather all the magicians of Kamataj? Wang asked. 
No, because I can feel that she is currently in the training ground. Luo Bai replied. Although Wang couldn't feel the energy fluctuations that broke into the mage, he could feel it. The abnormal energy comes from the training ground. Training ground. This mage broke into Kamataj and went straight to the training ground. Could it be that this mage just wanted to come in and get to know you? Wang guessed. As the new supreme mage, it is normal for the Earth's mages to be curious. But Luo Bai felt that things might not be that simple. Of course, he could not guarantee 100% the purpose of this mage's coming. So after thinking about it he replied, let's go to the training ground first. Kama Taj, training ground. By the time Luo Bai and Wang arrived at the training ground, the mages had already started training. Modu guided the students in their training, while the more experienced mages stood aside and watched. Seeing Luo Bai coming, Modu came over and said hello, Supreme Mage, King. Yeah. Luo Bai nodded. Before he could speak, the senior mages standing aside came forward to greet Luo Bai one by one. Luo Bai and the others chatted politely for a few words, and then began to watch the training of the sect mage. Of course, this is only on the surface. In fact, Luo Bai was looking for the mage who broke in. Through energy fluctuations, he quickly found the uninvited guest. At this time, the mage was hiding among the entry-level students, practicing with them. Supreme mage, have you found the intruder? Wang asked in a low voice as soon as he found it. Luo Bai nodded and responded, the third row is fourth from the left. Following the prompt, Wang quickly saw the intruder. This made Wang even more confused. She broke into Karma Taj pretending to be an apprentice. It's too easy to be exposed. Modu takes these apprentice trainings every day, and it will soon be obvious that she is not Karma Taj's mage. Wang couldn't help but say. In fact, Luo Bai didn't know why. The only way to explain it is, maybe the mage didn't want to hide it at all. To be more precise, she might just want Luo Bai to notice her. Just as he was thinking about it, Modu discovered something was wrong. Among the apprentices was a new face that he had never seen before. Who are you? Modu stopped and stood in front of the intruder and asked, why have I never seen you before? The intruder smiled sinisterly, and then answered, my name is Agatha. Kama Taja's library contains information about many mages. This includes Agatha. She is one of the most powerful witches on earth, and her strength is terrifying. So the moment he heard the name, Agatha, Modu's expression changed. Agatha. Witch. What are you doing here at Karma Taj? Mordo asked. Ha 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 ha. Of course I'm here to see who the Ancient One has chosen to be the Supreme Mage, Agatha smiled. As she spoke, the powerful black and purple magic power enveloped her whole body, and soon Agatha returned to her original witch appearance. Although after regaining her appearance, Agatha looked like a middle-aged woman in her forties. But in fact Agatha is a 10,000-year-old witch. She used some special methods to delay her aging, which made her look young. Otherwise, she will probably appear as a classic old witch. After all, she also has a nickname called the Old Witch. Agatha's appearance shocked all the mages present. Because everyone knows that her purpose is definitely not that simple. In fact, she is definitely not a kind mage, because her philosophy is very different from Kama Taj's philosophy. In the eyes of many magicians in Karma Taj, Karma Taj is absolutely not allowed to learn black magic. But Agatha doesn't care so much. As long as it helps her, Agatha will learn. Because of this, Agatha was classified as an evil witch by the magicians of Karma Taj. Since it is evil, it cannot have no purpose. Thinking of this, Modu shouted, All mages, prepare for battle. In just a moment, all the magicians of Kama Taj put on their fighting postures and set up their magic circles, ready for war at any time. Luo Bai knew that with Kama Taj's current strength, even these mages combined could not defeat Agatha. So he immediately gave the order, Modu, you take the mages to continue practicing. Modu was stunned. Continue practicing. Mordo was a little worried and said, Supreme Mage, Agatha is an evil witch. She must not have good intentions when she comes to Kama Taj. Luo Bai calmly replied, I understand, she won't disturb you. As his words fell, the mirror dimension instantly opened. The powerful force instantly enveloped the entire Kama Taj, isolating the entire space. 
As the mirror dimension opened, only Luobai and Agatha were left in the entire space. Mirror dimension. Yes, yes. It's really good that you can reach such a level at such a young age. I thought there would be no one left after ancient one left, but I didn't expect that such a good talent like you would be left behind. Looking at the mirror dimension surrounding herself, Agatha smiled and spoke. There was no trace of fear on her face, more of a careless look. She glanced at the mirror dimension with disdainful eyes, and then continued to taunt. Child, you don't think that this mirror dimension can control me, do you? Then you think that I am too weak. Luo Bai shook his head and replied calmly. No. I opened the mirror space just to prevent Kamataj from being affected. The words fell before Agatha could react. Luo Bai recited a spell silently in his mind and cast the form of Aikin. In just a moment, countless duplications appeared and filled the entire mirror dimension. Then he controlled all the duplications and released the ring of Ragador. At the moment of release, a red circular magic shield appeared on the hands of countless duplications, and those duplications followed Luo Bai's body and attacked Agatha. Seeing that he was the first to attack, Agatha quickly responded and started a fierce battle with Luo Bai's duplication. How about saying that Agatha is a 10,000-year-old witch? It was easy to deal with Luo Bai's tens of thousands of duplications, and he even had time to say, these melee magic spells of your Kama Taj pose no threat to me at all. Don't you have the, Book of Darkness? Come on, kid. Use the power of the Book of Darkness to deal with me. Agatha said with a strange smile. Seriously. If Luo Bai hadn't understood the plot and knew that Agatha could absorb magical energy, he might have been fooled. As one of the most powerful witches on earth, Agatha must have some abilities. Although the book does not record Agatha's specific abilities, Luo Bai, who understands the plot, does. Agatha can not only resist most magical attacks but can even absorb magical power. So to deal with her, melee magic is much more useful. Of course, the reason why Agatha can be so strong is inseparable from one key. That is, she has also studied the, Book of Darkness. And from her tentative words just now, Luo Bai could roughly guess. The purpose of her coming to Kamataj today was to take away the, Book of Darkness. Thinking of this, Luo Bai replied while attacking, It seems that you already know that the Dark God book is with me. Mentioning, the Book of Darkness, Agatha was obviously excited. Of course, that is my book. I have always treasured it. But I don't know why it suddenly disappeared one day when I went back. I searched for a long time and finally found it. It, it turns out that it was stolen by you. Steal. No, no, no. I picked up that book. What's more, that book isn't yours either. Luo Bai replied calmly. Agatha. What the hell did you pick up? This book has been sitting with me for hundreds of years, and you told me you picked it up. Of course Agatha would not believe that Luo Bai had picked up the, Dark God book. After all, ever since she obtained the, Book of Darkness, she has kept this book in a secret room and rarely takes it out. Luo Bai must have used some magic to steal the book from the secret room of her house. Thinking of this, Agatha said angrily, that book has been kept at home all this time, how could you pick it up? Luo Bai calmly replied, the Dark God book has its own consciousness, and it is normal for it to leave. You should think about why the Dark God book gave up on you. Agatha became even more angry after hearing what he said. Because what Luo Bai said is true, the Dark Book has its own consciousness and will choose its own host. Once the Dark Book selects a host, no one can stop the change. Agatha knew that the departure of the Dark God Book meant that she had been abandoned by the God Book, but she was unwilling to do so, so she came to find him. It has been with me for hundreds of years, and I am its owner. It must be you who stole it using dirty means. You Karma Taj mages keep saying that you are not allowed to practice black magic, and you also call me an evil witch. Unexpectedly, you have the idea of my dark divine book. It is really disgusting. Agatha snapped. She cursed very filthy, which proved that she was angry. Originally, she could still calmly deal with Luo Bai's numerous duplications, but since he hit her in anger, the movements of her hands have obviously slowed down. Seeing this, Luo Bai quickly continued to complain. You have been studying the Dark God book for hundreds of years and you don't know that it has its own consciousness. No wonder the Dark God book doesn't want you. Tsk tsk tsk. 
After saying this, Agatha's defense was completely broken. All I can think of is what Luo Bai said. The Book of Darkness doesn't want you anymore, the Book of Darkness doesn't want you anymore. The words echoed in her mind like a curse, making Agatha extremely irritable. You obviously stole it. Come out. Agatha said angrily. Taking advantage of her rage, Luo Bai controlled all the duplications and transformed into the sacred sword of Bashanti and chopped them off at the same time. Agatha, who was in rage state, had no time to react before she was hit by countless sacred swords and fell to the ground instantly. Only then did Agatha finally realize that Luo Bai had deliberately angered her just now, just to distract her. A little clever, but of no use. Do you think you can hurt me with this little power? Agatha shouted. As her volume increased, a black-purple power burst out from her body, spreading around like a powerful shock wave. The powerful power allowed Luo Bai's countless duplications to be resolved, leaving only the true body. The moment the real body appeared, Agatha released her witchcraft. The moment the witchcraft was released, countless purple rays of light wrapped around Luo Bai's body like vines, controlling his entire body. Agatha had strong practical experience, so she gave Luo Bai almost no chance to struggle. After taking control of Luo Bai, she immediately used magic to control Luo Bai's will. Fortunately, Luo Bai released time magic at this time, quickly making time flow back to the second before he was controlled by Agatha. With the activation of time reversal, Luo Bai successfully got rid of his restraints. Before Agatha could react, Lubai once again released countless duplications and at the same time released Ceterac's Scarlet Chain. Countless Scarlet Chains emerged and tied up Agatha in an instant. It was then that Agatha finally realized something was wrong. Wrong. She remembered that Luo Bai was clearly under her control before, so why did the situation reverse in just the blink of an eye? And she didn't even realize what was happening. Could it be? Looking at the eye of Agamotto worn on Luo Bai's neck, Agatha suddenly understood. I didn't expect you to have learned the time magic. I underestimated you, kid. Agatha said in surprise. Luo Bai calmly replied, there are still many things you don't know. Really? Then what else do you want? Agatha said casually. As soon as she finished speaking, she disappeared. Then in just a blink of an eye, she appeared behind Luo Bai, and behind Luo Bai's body. Agatha's power is indeed beyond Luo Bai's imagination. Luo Bai used the form of Aikin to release countless duplications. Unexpectedly, Agatha found his true form in an instant. The Scarlet Chains had no effect on her either. Even though the Scarlet Chain is the strongest magic chain among white magic, Agatha can also do witchcraft. It's easy to escape from the Scarlet Chain. Almost in the blink of an eye, Agatha appeared behind him. Luo Bai instantly felt a chill on his back, and he wanted to use magic to move to other places to get rid of Agatha. Unexpectedly, Luo Bai discovered that he seemed to be unable to use white magic and black magic anymore. Don't waste your efforts, child, look around. Agatha said. Only then did Luo Bai notice that some weird and strange purple characters had appeared around him. These characters were connected to each other to form a barrier, trapping Luo Bai. After seeing these talismans, Luo Bai roughly understood them. It turns out that just now, Agatha set up a magic barrier through these spells. This is a kind of witchcraft that Agatha created herself by combining the power of the Dark God book. Simply put, it forms an enchantment through spells. Only the same magic and witchcraft set by Agatha can be used in this magic barrier. Other than that, other witchcraft and magic will be temporarily invalid. Even chaos force becomes unusable once it is restricted by a spell. Agatha is the most powerful witch on earth. Her witchcraft is indeed something, but it doesn't seem to be difficult for Luo Bai. Seriously. In fact, your strength is very good. If you study for a while, you may become a very powerful mage. Unfortunately, you did not study long enough and you are still far behind me. So now that the game is over, you should return the book to me. Just as she was thinking about it, Agatha spoke. As she spoke, she unleashed her witchcraft. It was obvious that she wanted to control Luo Bai and let Luo Bai take out the Book of Darkness on his own. But she failed. Because. A powerful ball of magical energy attacked Agatha. Although this magical energy was quickly absorbed by Agatha, Agatha was still confused. Wait, 
Did she read that right just now? Why does Luo Bai know her witchcraft? You know witchcraft? Agatha asked confused. Luo Bai shook his head and responded. No, I just learned it. Agatha was stunned. Just learned. No, you are learning now. To be honest, Agatha was a little confused at this time. Just now, when Agatha was about to use witchcraft to control Luo Bai's consciousness. The floating cloak draped on Luo Bai suddenly rushed towards her, and then controlled her hands. Taking advantage of this moment, Luo Bai released a magic energy ball towards Agatha. Agatha can absorb magical energy, and any magical energy cannot harm her and will even be absorbed by her in the opposite direction. Because of this, the magic energy ball caused no physical harm to Agatha. But Agatha's heart was shocked. This place has clearly been cursed by her. This means that except for her own witchcraft, no magic or witchcraft can be used in this barrier. But Luo Bai just released a magic energy ball on her, and said that he had just learned it. That is to say, during the short period of time when the two of them were fighting, Luo Bai learned her witchcraft. You're learning now. Is this reasonable? How is it possible? How could you learn it in such a short time? Agatha shouted in disbelief. Luo Bai said calmly, of course it's because of my high talent. Otherwise, why would the dark book choose me? Highly talented. Good, good, good. Agatha admitted that she did have a talent for learning magic and witchcraft. Besides, the magic energy ball is just a simple witchcraft. Once you learn it, you'll be fine. Thinking of this, Agatha snorted coldly and responded disdainfully, so what if you learn this? Do you think you can defeat me like this? As soon as she finished speaking, she heard Luo Bai ask back, who said I only learned this one witchcraft? Quote question mark question mark question mark question mark quote. Before she could react, what did Luo Bai mean by this? Luo Bai suddenly released his witchcraft, and then the surrounding spells disappeared. At this moment, Agatha opened her eyes wide. Wait, did she read that correctly? You cancelled my spell. Agatha asked in surprise. Luo Bai asked back, is this strange? Agatha finally panicked now. She wanted to break free from the entanglement of the levitating cloak, and at this moment Luo Bai released his witchcraft. Black red light spread around, and a new spell appeared in the mirror space the next second. Luo Bai restricted the use of magic. This means that in this enchantment, Agatha can no longer use magic. How is it possible? Dot how is this possible? Agatha said in surprise. She looked at the black and red characters appearing all around, and watched as those characters were connected and eventually formed a barrier to surround her. Agatha could no longer remain calm. She opened her mouth so wide that her CPU was almost burning. No. I have studied witchcraft for most of my life. Have you read it again? Ah. You make me look funny like this, you know. Agatha looked dumbfounded at the talisman barrier set by Luo Bai. Even if she couldn't believe it, she still had to believe that Luo Bai had actually learned her witchcraft. Horrible, really terrible. But she didn't understand. I have never cast a witchcraft to cancel a spell, how did you do this? Agatha asked in a panic. Even if you can really do it, you will know it after watching it once. But she never showed the method of cancelling the spell from beginning to end. How did Luo Bai do it? Just when she was depressed, Luo Bai said casually, of course I realized it. Enlightenment, enlightenment. It means that you just drew inferences. Not only did I learn how to create a spell barrier, but I also figured out how to cancel the spell barrier. Agatha took a deep breath, holding in a mouthful of old blood and almost spit it out. What a person who realized it on his own. Simply, astonishing. But it's not impossible to think about it. After all, Luo Bai had learned the black magic in the Dark God book, and Agatha had also learned it. Agatha's witchcraft is combined with the Book of Darkness. If Luo Bai can realize it, she can also understand it. Can. Where's the spell? No matter how good your talent is, you can't figure out the spell. Agatha said angrily. Most witchcraft requires spells to be released. Agatha's witchcraft is no exception. Please, she created those spells one by one. The fact that Luo Bai can understand the spell is ridiculous. Just as he was thinking about it, Luo Bai spoke, spell. I just guessed it casually, and it's not difficult to guess. 
So, not only did you learn my witchcraft after just one look, but you even guessed the corresponding spell by guessing. Agatha's defenses were completely broken. This person is not cheating, can you report it? Agatha originally thought the Ancient One was dead. She could easily take out the Book of Darkness from Kamataj, so she sneaked into Kamataj today. But she never expected that she would meet such a god. You can learn the magic by watching it once, and the spells can be guessed by luck. No, how can we fight this? Although it feels very embarrassing. As the most powerful witch on earth, she was defeated by a newly minted mage after living for such a long time. But now, Agatha had to admit defeat. No wonder Ancient One left with peace of mind and let you take over Kamataj. I gave up the Dark God book. As soon as she finished speaking, Luo Bai spoke, I think you made a mistake. It's not that you gave up on the Dark God's book, but that the Dark God's book gave up on you. Agatha sighed, and then admitted, you were right. Well, I admit that your understanding is amazing, but I lost. My child, untie the spell, I will leave Kamataj now. Quote. Agatha thought that after admitting defeat, she would be fine as long as she left Kamathaj. Hearing her say this, Luo Bai smiled. Intruder, let's finish asking the questions. Luo Bai said. Agatha was stunned and realized something was wrong, intruder. What do you mean? As the current manager of Kamataj and the Supreme Mage of the Earth, I have the authority to execute you for trespassing on Kamataj. Luo Bai said. As his voice fell, Luo Bai unleashed his dark power. The black light instantly enveloped Agatha. Because of the spell, Agatha was now unable to release any magic at all. Before Agatha could respond to what Luo Bai wanted to do. The next second, Luo Bai began to absorb Agatha's power. Absorb the power of darkness. This is the black magic that Luo Bai just learned from the Book of Darkness. Although Agatha is a witch, because she also learned the Book of Darkness, the power in her body is also the power of darkness. In fact, under normal circumstances, Luo Bai cannot absorb Agatha's dark power. But now Agatha's magic is restricted, and without power, she can only watch as Luo Bai absorbs all her power. This also means that from this moment on, Luo Bai has mastered all of Agatha's witchcraft and power. You absorbed all my power. After absorbing it, Agatha spoke in disbelief. She didn't expect that Luo Bai would absorb all her power. Due to losing her strength, Agatha now turned into the appearance of a gray-haired old man. This made Agatha very angry and shouted, You are the supreme mage. If the magicians of Kamataj know that you learn dark power and do this, have you ever thought about the consequences? I never thought about it. I only know that those who invade Kamataj and the earth, whether they are mages or other creatures, will have to pay a price. So you are exiled, Agatha Witch. Luo Bai said as he opened the interdimensional portal. He banished Agatha. While in exile, the magic cloak returned to him. Agatha had all her power drained and was exiled to the multi-universe. With her current ability, staying in a multi-universe would be very risky, and she might be swallowed by some evil god with her belt and soul. Of course, Luo Bai didn't care about this. After all, she broke into Kamataj without invitation and was seen by so many mages. If she is not punished, who in the mages world will take Luo Bai seriously? It was inevitable that she would be exiled, but I have to say that her coming here also brought a lot of benefits to Luo Bai. One of the most powerful witches on earth. Her knowledge and witchcraft are areas that Luo Bai has never touched before, so they will be of great use after being absorbed. After taking some time to digest the knowledge he had learned, Luo Bai closed the mirror space. As soon as the mirror space was closed, Wang and Modu came over immediately. Supreme Mage, where is which Agatha? Wang asked, looking a little worried. Luo Bai smiled and reassured the two of them, she has been exiled to the multi-universe by me, and there is a high probability that she will not come back, so you don't have to worry. Hearing Luo Bai say this, both of them opened their eyes wide at the same time. You know, Agatha has been practicing witchcraft and studying magic for hundreds of years or even longer. Although Luo Bai has outstanding talent. But how long have you been learning magic before you can defeat Agatha and banish her? Is this any different from a newbie jumping up a level to fight a mini boss? No wonder Wang and Modu had shock written all over their faces at this time. 
it can be seen from their eagerly moving lips that they seem to have many questions to ask. But due to Luo Bai's current status as the Supreme Mage, it was difficult for the two of them to ask more questions. So after hesitating for a moment, Modu finally said, Since the Supreme Mage has taken care of it, I will continue to lead the apprentices to practice, and I will ask the Supreme Mage to supervise. Luo Bai nodded and responded, Go ahead, I'll watch from here. After speaking, he walked aside and began to supervise the mage training. Wang quickly followed and stood beside Luo Bai. The two of them stood there for five minutes, but Shu couldn't bear it anymore. Wang finally couldn't hold back and spoke, Supreme Mage. I heard that witch Agatha is one of the most powerful witches on earth. She must have been learning witchcraft for hundreds of years. Wang didn't dare to continue talking about this. After all, it would be rude to ask further. But Luo Bai understood what he meant. Are you curious about how I defeated her? Luo Bai asked. After hearing what Luo Bai said, Wang Kai finally dared to let go and complain. Yes. She has been studying for hundreds of years, and she still can't beat you. But I'm very talented. I learned the witchcraft she unleashed just once by watching it. Luo Bai shrugged and answered helplessly. When he said this, Wang suddenly understood. Think about it. Now there is a person standing in front of you and learning all your magic after just one look, and he also uses your magic to attack you. You learn while beating him, and the more you beat him, the stronger he gets. It's really hard to beat this. Thinking of this, Wang couldn't help but complain, are you so talented? Can you learn it after just one look? Luo Bai was a little surprised and couldn't help asking, of course, otherwise how could I become the supreme mage? I thought the ancient one mage told you, but you don't know. Wang was silent. He had heard that Luo Bai was very talented. But I've never heard that Luo Bai's talent is so high. He can learn everything after just one look. Okay. Wang was completely convinced. It would be great if I had this talent. Wang muttered. I can't help but think, if I had this talent, I could wake up from my dreams with a smile. Luo Bai smiled and expressed. If you want to have such a talent, you must first have top luck. For example, like me, I am favored by the goddess of luck. Of course, these were just the emotions he expressed in his heart, he did not say them out loud. Instead, he continued to supervise the mage training. The supervisor was supervising, and suddenly the phone vibrated. Thinking that nothing happened now, Luo Bai took it out and took a look. Only then did he realize that Stark had sent him a text message. The text message stated that Stark had produced the latest suit MK7, and hoped that Luo Bai could come and see if there was anything that could be improved. Luo Bai couldn't help but feel a little emotional when he saw this text message. How about Stark being a genius? Luo Bai just gave him a general direction and suggestions, but he didn't expect Stark to upgrade his suit and create MK7 so quickly. He thought that he really had to go to New York to tell Polaris about his move. Luo Bai replied, Okay, see you at the villa tonight. In fact, what Luo Bai has to do today is quite simple, it is nothing more than to let all the mages know him. So after supervising the mage training in the morning, he received several foreign mages in the afternoon. These mages are all admirers of the ancient one mages. Although they did not study at Kamataj, they have all received more or less help from the ancient one. Maybe they didn't know much about Luo Bai before, but after learning that Luo Bai banished Agatha Witch, they showed such respect to Luo Bai. Especially after exchanging their understanding of magic, witchcraft, and occult arts with Luo Bai, several mages instantly transformed into Luo Bai's admirers. After all, Luo Bai is not only talented but also very hardworking, and his understanding of magic and multi-universe is completely different from theirs. It is normal for them to believe Luo Bai. After seeing off the last mage who came to communicate, Luo Bai finally had some free time. I'm finally done with my work. I didn't expect that being the supreme mage is quite tiring. Luo Bai stretched out and couldn't help but complain. Wang, who was standing aside, quickly explained, After all, you have just taken office, so you can just wait for a while. Supreme mage, if you are tired, take a rest first. Luo Bai shook his head and said, I can't rest for now, I have to go to New York to deal with some things. Wang didn't ask any more questions and just replied, since you have something to do, go ahead. 
Master Modu is in charge of Karma Taj. If something happens, I will go to you as soon as possible. Luo Bai nodded and was about to open the portal and leave. Suddenly he seemed to remember asking the king, King, do you remember the mage who protects the temple now, right? Yes. Are there many problems in the temple? If not, I will leave the library to you in the future. Library. Although he didn't know why Luo Bai suddenly asked him to be a librarian, Wang still agreed, Okay, I will take over the library work now. After saying this, Wang was ready to leave. At this moment, Luo Bai suddenly stopped him. Wang, if you find any abnormal situation, remember not to act rashly, just come to me directly. Luo Bai's words were a reminder, more like a warning that something might happen to the library later. As the mage king, he immediately understood the meaning. His expression immediately became serious, and he said firmly, I will remember the words of the supreme mage. If something happens, I will go to you as soon as possible. Don't worry about me doing the work. Luo Bai felt relieved and started teleporting to New York. New York, Lo Bai's house. Polaris was sitting on the sofa, eating a burger and watching TV. At this moment, she suddenly saw a yellow circle appear out of thin air, and her eyes lit up instantly. She quickly stood up from the sofa, and the next second she saw Luo Bai walking out of the portal. Master Luo Bai, are you back? Do you want dinner? I'll cook it for you. Polaris said excitedly, putting down the burger in his hand and planning to cook. Seeing what she said, Luo Bai asked half-jokingly, didn't you say you can't cook? Polaris said with some embarrassment, while you were gone, I studied on my own online for a while. Luo Bai was stunned. Polaris actually learns to cook. Seeing that he didn't answer, Polaris quickly explained, although it may not be that delicious, I have tasted it myself and it tastes pretty good and is edible. Luo Bai suddenly laughed when he heard her say that. To be honest, I'm quite surprised. Accident. What happened? After all, when I punished you by making you a housekeeper, I saw that you were quite reluctant. And you were only allowed to be a housekeeper for three months. I didn't expect you to go out of your way to learn how to cook for me. Luo Bai said. With Polaris' temperament, he probably has never even entered the kitchen. It was beyond Luo Bai's expectation that he would go out of his way to learn how to cook. Polaris could also understand his surprise, so he quickly explained, at the beginning, it was because we were not familiar with each other. But you helped me a lot during this period. You let me live in the villa, and encouraged me to work hard to practice my powers and help I drove away professor. Luo Bai remembered this when he mentioned it. What did Stark say? Luo Bai asked. Mr. Stark said that I am free. The association has cancelled my global wanted order after discussing with various countries. I am very grateful to you. But I don't know how to repay you. I can only help you cook and do odd jobs. Polaris replied a little sheepishly. After she finished speaking, her face turned red, and it was obvious that she was really embarrassed. But her reaction pleased Luo Bai. It is good to know how to be grateful. Proving that Luo Bai's help was not in vain. But those were just easy things, and Luo Bai didn't think about asking for anything in return, and he didn't want her to feel so burdened. After thinking about it, Luo Bai responded comfortingly, although letting you be a housekeeper is a punishment for breaking into my house. But you have done a good job during this period, so I am willing to help you. You don't need to have such a big psychological burden. Quote. When he said this, Polaris became even more embarrassed. That, that. Master Luo Bai, I'll go cook for you first. Polaris said and wanted to go to the kitchen. At this moment, Luo Bai stopped her. Wait a minute, I have something to tell you. Polar Star stopped, lowered his head and asked softly, Does Master Luo Bai have anything to explain? I can't talk about an explanation. It's just that I plan to move, and I may rarely come here in the future. Luo Bai said. Move place. Polaris raised his head and asked hurriedly. Where are you moving to? I'm going to pack things right now. Do you have anything to bring? Just tell me and I'll pack it for you right away. Luo Bai was stunned when she asked him this. You want to go with me? Luo Bai asked. Of course, I am your housekeeper. Polaris replied firmly. But we only agreed for three months. Luo Bai replied. Polar Star didn't care and answered seriously. Master Luo Bai, if you don't mind, I can always be your housekeeper. 
Luo Bai was silent. When he didn't speak, Polaris continued, I don't need a salary, and I can make money on my own now. I haven't used your money during this time. Polaris said as he took out a box from the room. It's the box that Natasha Romanoff sent before. After opening it, Luo Bai found that there was no shortage of money inside. Luo Bai was a little surprised and couldn't help but ask, you have never touched the money. I used some before, but I returned them all. Polaris explained. This made Luo Bai curious and couldn't help asking, where did you get the money? Mr. Stark helped me find a job. Although I didn't want to trouble him, I couldn't keep using your money, so I went. Polaris answered seriously. Luo Bai suddenly realized that it was Tony who helped. Just as he was thinking about it, Polaris continued to speak. Master Luo Bai. If you don't mind, I can always be your housekeeper. I have listened to you and trained my ability well, and I won't bother you again in the future. You see, I now I am no longer a loser and I can control my ability. After saying that, Polaris used his ability. I have to say that after this period of practice, Polaris' ability to control the magnetic field has improved a lot, and now she can basically release her ability easily. This made Luo Bai feel gratified and couldn't help but praise. Very good, I believe you will become very powerful in the future. Polaris was very happy to receive the compliment, and she quickly asked, then can I move with you? Not for the time being. Luo Bai refused. After all, he was moving to the New York Temple. That is the Temple of Karma Taj, and non-magicians cannot enter. Even if Luo Bai was moved by Polaris' sincerity and agreed to let Polaris stay as a housekeeper. It is impossible to agree to let her go to the New York Temple, unless Polaris has the magic talent to be a mage. But now Polaris can't even understand her own ability, so don't let her have so much contact with it for the time being. Thinking of this, Luo Bai smiled and said, Although I have moved, it's not like I won't come here. The matter of opening a portal goes back and forth very quickly. While I'm away, you can take care of the villa here. Quote. Okay. Polaris agreed happily. As soon as he finished speaking, Luo Bai took out a piece of paper and handed it over. This is my phone number. If you need anything, call me. Polaris took it and quickly took out his mobile phone to save the number. At this moment, the doorbell rang outside the door, and Luo Bai knew that it was Stark who was coming without even thinking about it. Sure enough, when the door opened, Stark appeared in front of Luo Bai. Oh. My friend Luo Bai. I miss you so much. Stark spoke enthusiastically as soon as he entered the door. Seeing how excited he was, Luo Bai smiled and replied, You look like you are in good condition. Stark replied excitedly, Of course. After listening to your advice, I went back to upgrade the iron suit and succeeded. Let me show you. Stark said, then yelled, Jarvis. Following Stark's shout, a steel suit flew over from a short distance away. After infrared scanning, it was automatically put on Stark's body. In less than a minute, Stark's transformation was successful. How is it? Are you handsome? Stark asked proudly. Luo Bai nodded and praised. Cool. Would you like to come to my home and have a look? Let's study it together. I'm now thinking about how to upgrade the suit. I think the magic suit proposal you mentioned is very good. How about we study it together? Stark asked. Luo Bai replied half-jokingly. It's still early for research. Stark spread his hands and replied with a smile. Okay, I was just joking. In fact, I am planning to research the anti-Hulk suit now. You know, Dr. Banner is not very stable at the moment, so I want to hear your opinion suggestion. Luo Bai was about to agree, when he suddenly felt a strong energy wave appear on the earth. Wait Stark, there are special circumstances. Luo Bai said. Stark was confused and asked, what's going on? I felt an abnormal energy fluctuation just now. Luo Bai muttered. Stark was stunned and asked anxiously, why didn't I feel it? Is something happening to the Earth? Is there a multi-universe biological invasion? I'm not sure, let me take a look. Luo Bai said. He ran the time gem to check the situation, and Luo Bai discovered that the abnormal energy fluctuation just now came from the Tesseract. To put it bluntly, Tesseract is a rough space stone. Since the six infinite stones in the Marvel Universe are very powerful, so powerful that ordinary people cannot directly bear their power, each stone will basically have a container to carry it. 
Tesseract is the container that holds the original space stone. In fact, the Tesseract has been on Earth since more than 90 years ago and is in the custody of S.H.I.E.L.D. It's just that it hasn't performed well all this time. Simply put, it's in an, inactive, state. Just now, Luo Bai suddenly felt that the Tesseract inspired powerful energy, which can only prove that S.H.I.E.L.D. is studying it. In fact, this is not surprising. After all, Nick Fury, the director of S.H.I.E.L.D., has always wanted to, master, all the super abilities on Earth, so he needs powerful weapons. The weapons on the Earth can no longer satisfy his desires, so he wants to absorb energy from the universe. Tesseract is the best, ingestion, object. The space stone inside is very powerful. If you can absorb energy from it, you can research weapons. Nick Fury is estimated to be able to fulfill his ambitions and goals. But in Luo Bai's opinion, it was too stupid for him to do so. Because Nick Fury couldn't control Tesseract at all, he didn't even know what Tesseract was before he started researching it. If the original stone in Tesseract becomes out of control, can he pay for his actions? This is not Luo Bai's unfounded worry. Based on the original plot. Due to SHIELD's continuous research on the Tesseract, the original stones in the Tesseract continue to stimulate spatial fluctuations. So Loki, holding the Mind Scepter, could easily feel the specific direction and location of the Tesseract. Instigated by Thanos, Loki came to Earth with the Psychic Scepter. In the end, alien invasion was created, triggering the, New York War. Now that S.H.I.E.L.D. is researching the Tesseract, it is undoubtedly sending a signal to Loki and Thanos. Luo Bai just looked at the future through the Time Stone and found that Loki will come to the Earth in three days. This made him frown. Seeing that he didn't speak and looked serious, Stark couldn't help but become nervous. Robin, what happened? Stark asked. Withdrawing the magic, Luo Bai briefly explained the situation. Since it involved too many terms that he had never heard of before, Stark was a little confused after listening to it. I'm sorry Luo Bai, I didn't understand what you just said. You said that S.H.I.E.L.D. is studying the Tesseract and wants to absorb energy from it to make weapons. Can you first explain to me what the Tesseract is? Stark asked. You can understand it is a powerful weapon from the universe. Human technology cannot fully understand its power, let alone control it. Luo Bai explained. Now he understood. After understanding, Stark was very angry, so Nick Fury is studying a cosmic energy that even he can't control. Nick Fury. What on earth is he doing every day? Why does he always like to study such dangerous things? At this time, he obviously did not realize the seriousness of the problem, so Luo Bai couldn't help but remind. This is not the key to the problem Tony, the key is that his current behavior will bring danger to the earth. If left alone, what will happen outside the earth? Creatures will invade the earth. Extraterrestrial creatures. Hearing this, Stark couldn't stand it anymore. Shet. Nick Fury told me that he created the Avengers to protect the earth, but what did he do? We'll talk about the suit later, Lobai, let's go to S.H.I.E.L.D. right now. I have to go beat him up. Stark cursed. He has a quick temper. Knowing that Nick Fury was doing something dangerous, he flew to S.H.I.E.L.D. without saying a word. But Luo Bai stopped him. Don't be impulsive, Tony. What do you mean? Stark said anxiously. Luo Bai, we have to stop him quickly. Luo Bai shook his head and said, it can't be stopped anymore. I can feel the space fluctuations released by the Tesseract, and powerful creatures in the universe can also perceive it. The location of the Tesseract has been exposed for now. Then we don't care. Stark asked anxiously. Of course I care, but it's not yet time. Luo Bai said. Now that the location of the Tesseract has been exposed, Loki will come with the Psychic Scepter in three days to snatch the Tesseract. Then why not Luo Bai wait until then to take action and grab the Cosmic Magic and the Spiritual Scepter? After all, the Spiritual Scepter that Loki brought was embedded with the original Spiritual Stone. He himself took the initiative to deliver the rough stone to his door, so Luobai had no reason not to want it. Instead of being snatched away by Thanos and triggering a global population crisis by snapping his fingers, he might as well take them all back and use them for himself. With this thought, Luobai comforted Stark. Tony, trust me. I will take action when the time is right. Although Stark was anxious at this time. But thinking that Luo Bai is a mage, and the earth is protected by the supreme mage. 
He's a little wiser. If something happens to the Earth, the Sorcerer Supreme will help, right? Stark asked. Before Luo Bai could answer, he continued, We are friends, so I won't hide it from you. My ability is limited after all, and I'm not sure whether I can defeat creatures outside the Earth. You are already so strong, if, if the Supreme Mage can take action, I will feel much more at ease. Luo Bai certainly understands his worries. In order to reassure him, Luo Bai reassured, of course. The Supreme Mage already knows about this. That's good. Stark breathed a sigh of relief, but he still seemed a little worried. After a moment of silence, he asked, do you need me to do anything? As long as it can ensure the safety of the earth, I can do anything you want. Luo Bai thought for a while and then replied, it really is. What? If S.H.I.E.L.D. contacts you, please remember to call me immediately. Nick Fury's actions have seriously harmed the Earth and he should be punished. Stark was stunned. It suddenly dawned on me. Mission. Impossible. Okay, I've seen similar movies. I didn't expect that I would be a spy one day. But I'm very happy. Don't worry, if S.H.I.E.L.D. contacts me, I will definitely call you. Stark said, I casually made an okay gesture. Luo Bai smiled and then changed the subject and asked, By the way, you asked me to help you see how to upgrade the suit. Let's go to your villa and have a look. Meanwhile, the shield. Building. At this time, agents led by Coulson sealed the basement tightly. Dr. Selvig and a group of researchers are studying Tesseract. The energy fluctuations have increased, Dr. Selvig. Turn off the power now. Quote the power is turned off but the power of the Rubik's Cube continues to radiate, Dr. Selvig. Drive Selvig, we have lost control of the Tesseract, it seems to have activated itself. As the research deepened, Dr. Selvig and the researchers were completely unable to control the Tesseract. Sensing the seriousness of the matter, Coulson immediately called Nick Fury. S.H.I.E.L.D. was unable to control the Tesseract, but accidentally activated the Tesseract. The energy is constantly being released, becoming more and more out of control as time goes by. The Tesseract seems to have a consciousness of its own, and it begins to do whatever it wants. Upon learning of this situation, Nick Fury rushed back to S.H.I.E.L.D. as soon as possible after handling the matter at hand. Three days later he returned to the S.H.I.E.L.D. building. But at this time Tesseract has completely let itself go. It automatically opened the door to space, and Loki descended on the Earth. It wasn't until Loki snatched away the Tesseract with the Mind Scepter that Nick Fury realized the seriousness of the matter. At this time, Luo Bai's words came to his mind, Do you think you can control everything? No, you can't control anything. Nick Fury was very reluctant, but now he couldn't think. The fact that the Tesseract was snatched away will inevitably become a hidden danger to the Earth. He can only ask people to help him find the Tesseract. Although based on the current situation, Luo Bai should be able to solve this matter perfectly. But he didn't dare to ask Luo Bai for help at all, so he could only run to find other people. At this time, Stark Industries is at the top. Stark and Pepper were drinking and chatting. Tony, I remember that your suit has been successfully upgraded, right? Why do you seem so bad these days? Pepper asked with concern. Stark said nothing but took a sip of wine. Three days ago, Luo Bai told him that aliens were about to invade the Earth. Although he knew that with the Sorcerer Supreme and Luo Bai on Earth, everything would be fine, but Stark was still worried. He became anxious because of worry. But he didn't dare to tell Pepper. After thinking about it, Stark smiled and responded, It's nothing serious, I just feel a little tired. You haven't had a good rest for a long time in order to study the suit. Tony, you should rest. Pepper comforted. But Stark couldn't sleep right now, all he could think about was aliens. At this moment, Jarvis's voice came from the mobile phone, Sir, my program has been rewritten. As Jarvis's voice fell, Coulson's voice rang out, Stark, we need to talk now. Coulson. Someone from S.H.I.E.L.D. Upon hearing this voice, Stark instantly became excited. I have wanted to find you for a long time. Wherever you are, I will come to you now. Stark said. As soon as he finished speaking, Coulson appeared at the door. Stark immediately sent a message to Lobai using a secret program. After the message was sent, Stark put down his phone and looked at Coulson. Seeing him alone, Stark asked, Where is Nick Fury? Why didn't that guy come? 
The director has other things to do. Coulson replied with a smile. Something else. Harming the earth? Stark asked. Coulson was obviously confused and asked. I don't understand what you mean. You don't have to understand, you just need to call Nick Fury over now. Stark said angrily, with a very serious look on his face. Coulson saw something was wrong with him. But because the situation was urgent, he didn't ask any more questions and just replied, if you are in a hurry to find him, I will tell him. But before that, I hope you will take a look at this information. I have just implanted it into your phone. After explaining everything, Coulson left. Stark frowned and opened the information sent by S.H.I.E.L.D. Just as Lubai said, S.H.I.E.L.D. is indeed researching the Tesseract. And now the Tesseract has been snatched away by an alien visitor named Loki. Seeing this information, Stark could no longer calm down, and flew directly to Luo Bai's apartment. Fortunately Luo Bai is in the apartment today. Thank God, Luo Bai, you are in the apartment today. Stark said hurriedly as soon as the door opened. I received the message and guessed that you were coming to see me, so I specially waited for you here. Luo Bai replied. As soon as he finished speaking, Stark anxiously explained the current situation. You are right. Nick Fury is really studying the Tesseract. Now an alien visitor named Loki has snatched the Tesseract. This is very dangerous for Loki. Quote. I know. Luo Bai replied. He used the time stone to check the future timeline before, and he knew everything that might happen. So he is not too worried at all now, but Stark is very worried. The alien visitor named Loki seems to have a very powerful ability, which S.H.I.E.L.D. cannot resist at all. Do you know him? Luo Bai nodded and responded, I know Loki. He is an Asgardian and the son of Odin. Stark was visibly stunned when he heard the name, Odin. Odin, is the father of the gods mentioned in the storybook. Stark asked in disbelief. After hearing Luo Bai's affirmative response, the expression on Stark's face was quite wonderful. The fact that there are mages on Earth is amazing enough. Now you are telling him that Odin in mythology lives in the universe. Stark was obviously a little confused. He couldn't help complaining. I think I may need some time to digest it. As soon as he finished speaking, Polaris brought a cup of coffee. Thank you, Miss Lorna. This cup of coffee was delivered just in time. Stark complained. After taking the coffee, Stark took a sip. But the expression on his face was still shocked. I don't know how long he waited for it, before he finally asked. Luo Bai, I would like to take the liberty of asking. You asked. Who is more powerful, the Sorcerer Supreme or Odin? I don't know this either. Luo Bai was a little helpless. He has never fought Odin, so how does he know who is better between him and Odin? Hearing Luo Bai's explanation, Stark felt even more uncertain. You said Loki is Odin's son, so now he comes to Earth and snatches the Tesseract. Is this what Odin means? Stark couldn't help but ask. Luo Bai shook his head and said, That's not true, Odin doesn't know about this. That's it. Stark muttered, and then asked, Can the Sorcerer Supreme deal with Loki? This is quite easy. Luo Bai responded, That's good, that's good. He's too dangerous to be left on Earth. Stark breathed a sigh of relief. He took another sip of coffee, and after finishing it Stark continued to ask, So what are your plans? There is a plan. Luo Bai said. What's the plan? Do you need my help? Stark asked. Wait. Wait. Wait for what? Wait until Loki comes to me. He invades the Earth privately and needs to be judged. Luo Bai said. Stark was confused and retorted in disbelief. How could he come to you for trial on his own? Luo Bai didn't answer, but used his mind to activate the magic of retrieving objects. It opens with a small yellow circle. Luo Bai put his hand in. Then, he took out a scepter and a blue square energy box. Seeing these two things, Stark was a little confused. What is this? Stark asked. The Tesseract and the Mind Scepter. Luo Bai said. Stark. He will be here soon. Luo Bai said. Stark shrugged helplessly. Awesome. It seems that my worries are a bit unnecessary. At this time, Loki looked at his empty hands, confused. No. Where is my tesseract? Where is the mind scepter? Where are my two big things? Why did he suddenly disappear? Who is it? Who just took my stuff? Loki was furious when suddenly he noticed a note on the ground. There is a line written on it. 
I accept the rough stone you sent to my door. To express your gratitude, please come to me here. Next is a line of address, and the last message is the Supreme Mage. Loki was furious when he saw this line of writing. What did I give you as a gift? You are robbing. It's a robbery. Mage Supreme. Mage Supreme, just wait, I'm going to find you now. Loki shouted angrily. Loki was furious at this point. After snatching the Tesseract from Shield, he took the Mind Scepter, the Tesseract and a large group of researchers to an abandoned factory. In order to achieve his goals, Loki needs to find a way to activate the power in the Tesseract. To put it simply, it means developing a device through which the powerful power in the Tesseract can be activated to open a cosmic portal. Once the cosmic portal is open, the Chitauri can come from distant planets to invade the Earth in batches. When the Earth was completely occupied, he became king. This is why Loki came to Earth to snatch the Tesseract. He wants to become the master, the king of the Earth. But he never expected it. When the technicians were studying the device, he just traveled to the Chitori planet as a soul to discuss the plan to invade the Earth with the Chitori. When the soul comes back. MD, things are missing. The Tesseract and the Psychic Scepter are both gone. The most important thing is that the person who took them left a note very arrogantly. This is a provocation. A naked provocation. Supreme Mage, right. Okay, okay, when I find you, I will make you pay the price. I will stab you through the chest with my knife. Cut you into pieces. Loki growled angrily. No, what kind of person is this person? How dare you call yourself the Supreme Mage in front of his ninth term first mage? What happened? Dr. Selvig was angry and couldn't help asking. When Loki broke into S.H.I.E.L.D. before, he not only took away the Tesseract, but also used the Mind Scepter to control the consciousness of Dr. Selvig and S.H.I.E.L.D. agent Hawkeye and others, allowing them to research the device to activate the Tesseract for him. Just now when Dr. Selvig was researching, the Tesseract suddenly disappeared. Not knowing what happened, Dr. Selvig asked. Loki didn't explain, because he was now red and warm. He just took out the crumpled note and asked Dr. Selvig, where is this address? Loki is an Asgardian and rarely comes to Earth, so it's normal that he doesn't understand Earth. Dr. Selvig opened the note and glanced at the address above, and quickly gave an answer, it's not far from here. Do you want to go here? I don't have time to talk nonsense with you now, tell me the coordinates immediately. Immediately. Loki rage. Dr. Selvig was startled. He quickly took out his mobile phone to search the map, and soon gave the coordinates. After hearing the exact coordinates, Loki disappeared. When he reappeared, Loki was already outside an apartment building. Glancing at the apartment address he confirmed. The address is correct, the Supreme Mage is inside. I learned that the, Supreme Master, lived here. Loki gritted his teeth and muttered, I found you. Supreme Mage, you are finished. He was about to break down the door. At this moment, he suddenly felt something was wrong. There was a familiar force approaching him. Loki's expression changed and he quickly turned around. He found a bright thing, like a shooting star, heading towards him. That thing is. Snap. There was no precaution at all, and he didn't even wait for Loki to react. A hammer hit Loki without warning. At that point Loki was face down. He fell straight to the ground. On his back lay a large hammer that gleamed in the dark. It was his brother Thor's hammer. Thor's hammer. Loki. Is it so accurate? What the hell? Loki felt short of breath and vomited out a mouthful of old blood. He wanted to get up, but the weight of Thor's hammer on his back made it hard for him to breathe. Thor. He yelled. The next second Thor appeared in front of him. Oh, my brother, long time no see. I'm sorry to see you in this way. How are you now? Thor showed a strong smile. Loki. Almost. He was almost able to kill that mage supreme with his own hands. But he never expected to die before leaving the army. Before he could even walk through the door, he was knocked down by Thor's hammer. At this time, Loki's anger level is full. Thor. Can you take that hammer back? Loki yelled. Thor shook his head and said casually, In order to prevent you from escaping, I think this is better. Quote dot dot dot. Shet. Loki who was being suppressed, blushed angrily and couldn't help but curse. Seeing Loki so angry made Thor feel so happy. He really understands his younger brother. 
I thought I would encounter some trouble when I came to look for him this time, but I didn't expect it to be solved so easily. Looking at Loki who was unable to move, Thor asked, where is the Tesseract Loki? Loki became even more angry when he heard the words, Tesseract. But it was also at this time that Loki calmed down. He knew exactly how to deal with his brother. This stupid big guy, he won't give in if he uses force. So in order to escape, Loki acted, weak. I'm also looking for the Tesseract, Loki said. Also looking. Have you lost the Tesseract? Thor asked. A man who calls himself the, Supreme Mage, stole the Tesseract and my scepter. If you had come a little later, I would have found him. Loki said, with helplessness and anger in his tone. Although the expression on Loki's face was sincere at this time, Thor didn't believe his lies at all. Do you think I would believe you, Loki? Thor said. His younger brother is known as the god of trickery. Thor has deceived himself so many times since he was a child that he has lost count. He can tolerate some small things. But thinking about what Loki did to him when he was exiled to Earth by his father, Thor couldn't bear it at all. Do you think I will be fooled by you again? I even thought you were dead before, but I didn't expect that you are not only alive and well, but also present on the earth. Thor said angrily. When Thor was exiled to earth, he was deprived of all abilities by his father Odin. His good brother not only nearly caused his death on earth, but also led the giants of Jotunheim to invade Asgard. Although his brother later joined him in taking down the giants of Jotunheim. But half of Asgard was destroyed as a result, and even the Rainbow Bridge was destroyed. In the end, Loki also fell off the broken Rainbow Bridge and disappeared without a trace. He once thought that Loki would die after falling from the Rainbow Bridge. Unexpectedly, Loki not only lived well, but also traveled to the Earth to make trouble. After his father Odin found out, he used great power to teleport him to Earth, just to let him bring back Loki and the Tesseract. Now Loki says that the Tesseract was snatched away by some, Supreme Mage. Have the Tesseract and the Psychic Scepter in hand. Loki, the ninth term no. One mage, couldn't defeat that, Supreme Mage, and had his things taken away. Having been lied to so many times, Thor now doesn't believe anything he says. Loki. My father and I both thought you were dead. My father even asked everyone in Asgard to mourn you. As a result, you are not only alive but also present on Earth. You really don't stop at all. Thor complained. When mentioning this matter, Loki seemed to remember something and asked, He told you my life experience, right? I said it. But so what? We were all raised by him. Thor said. It seems that Thor doesn't care at all that he is the son of the King of Giants of Jotunheim. This is also true. Loki knew very well that his brother valued fraternity. Thinking of this, Loki played the emotional card. I know, my brother. Just because we are brothers, I didn't lie to you. The Tesseract has really been taken away. You put the hammer away, and I will take you to find the Tesseract. Quote. Perhaps it was the word, brother, that touched Thor. Thor finally chose to believe it. He removed the hammer from Loki's back. Loki finally regained his life. He moved his limbs, and Thor beside him spoke take me to the Tesseract. I hope you didn't lie to me this time. I won't lie to you this time. Loki said. On the surface, he showed a harmless look, but in fact, he already had his own little plan in mind. He was preparing to take Thor with him to the Supreme Mage's house to settle accounts. At this moment, only a roar was heard. Hulk. The next second, a huge green creature rushed out. Before Loki and Thor could react, Hulk grabbed his foot. He was thrown to the ground like a piece of clothing and started a series of smashings. Loki. No. What the hell is this? Why did it suddenly come out? And. Thor is right next to him. Why don't you hit him? Why? Snap, 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 snap. The sound of hitting the ground kept ringing in the silent night sky. For a moment Thor was stunned. He just stood aside quietly, watching his brother Loki being hit by the leg by the green giant who suddenly rushed out and smashed him to the ground. The expressions on his face are quite rich. It wasn't until the green giant stopped that Thor came back to his senses. Looking at his brother lying in the smashed hole, Thor couldn't help but ask, Loki, are you okay? Loki didn't answer, obviously confused. Upon seeing this, Thor continued to ask with concern. 
although you were hit 56 times just now, you will be fine, right? Only then did Loki finally react. Thor. You just stood there and looked at your own brother like this. He was hit 56 times. Loki asked angrily. Thor spread his hands and replied helplessly. It was too sudden, I didn't react. Although his answer was very reasonable, the smile that inadvertently raised at the corner of his mouth betrayed him. Thor didn't react at all, he just didn't intend to help. Thor. Loki yelled. As soon as he finished speaking, Hulk on the side also shouted, Hulk. For a moment, Loki fell silent. He looked up at Hulk who was staring at him eagerly. Loki's eyes became extremely clear. Seeing this, Thor finally couldn't help but reveal his true nature, and responded with gloating, Loki, I have never seen you so well behaved. Loki. He really couldn't understand. Thor was obviously standing next to him, and he was much bigger than him. Why did this giant come up and hit himself instead of Thor without saying a word? This isn't fair. Of course, Loki couldn't think too much at this point. Because the Hulk is standing next to him and staring at him. Loki didn't dare to speak, let alone look at Hulk. He could only stare in horror and lie peacefully on the ground. After watching the fun, Thor finally remembered to ask about the origin of the green giant in front of him. Who are you and why are you here? Thor asked, holding the hammer in his hand tightly. Before Hulk could answer, a woman wearing a black tights came out and answered for him. His name is Hulk, and he is a member of the Avengers. Thor frowned and looked at the woman and asked, Who are you? My name is Natasha Romanoff. Your brother Loki stole the Tesseract from S.H.I.E.L.D. He needs to hand it over. Natasha Romanoff said. S.H.I.E.L.D. Thor had seen it before when he came to Earth, so he had heard about it. Hearing that she also came for the Tesseract, Thor frowned and immediately retorted, There is no way I will let you bring the Tesseract back to S.H.I.E.L.D. After speaking, Thor's eyes became sharp. Seemingly sensing Thor's hostility, Hulk also became angry. Hulk. Hulk yelled, looking directly into Thor's eyes. Are you two together? Very good. I just want to try this big guy's strength. Thor said. After saying this, Thor launched the first attack, throwing Thor's hammer at Hulk. Hulk didn't escape and was hit hard on the head. Hulk shook his dazed head, and when he woke up, Hulk became even angrier. Hulk. He roared angrily and punched Thor with his fist. Boom. This punch directly knocked Thor away. After Thor landed on the ground, Hulk rushed over and stepped on him. Without giving Thor a chance to react, Hulk smashed Thor in the face. Punch after punch, Thor was stunned. Fortunately, Thor summoned Thor's hammer. The huge force of Thor's hammer smashed Hulk away, and then Thor finally regained his strength. Thor sobered up a lot after being beaten, and he seemed to realize that the green giant in front of him was quite powerful. But before he could think about it, Hulk rushed over and the two of them fought again. The scene became quite chaotic for a while. And chaos is exactly what Loki wants to see. Spotting Thor and Hulk fighting, Loki knew his opportunity had come. He stopped, pretending to be dead, and climbed up from the hole in the ground. He planned to take this opportunity to go to that supreme mage's house to snatch back the tesseract. At this moment Natasha Romanoff stopped him. You want to run away. Stupid mortal, do you think you can stop me? Loki shouted angrily. He conjured up a knife and started fighting with Natasha Romanoff. It's obvious that Natasha Romanoff is no match for Loki. Fortunately, Loki didn't seem to want to tangle with her anymore, so he didn't hurt her. After breaking free from her entanglement, he rushed directly into the apartment. Natasha Romanoff wanted to stop him, but Loki had already broken in. Just when Natasha Romanoff was about to chase Loki in, she suddenly felt something was wrong. Why does this apartment that Loki entered look familiar? Natasha Romanoff was a little unsure and stepped back to look at the house number. Good guy. Isn't this Luo Bai's house? For a moment Natasha Romanoff was silent. Right now, a black car sped over and stopped on the side of the road. Soon, Nick Fury and Captain America walked out. As soon as the two came out, they saw Hulk and Thor fighting, and the fight was a chaos. Knowing he couldn't be stopped, Nick Fury approached Natasha Romanoff to learn about the situation. Natasha Romanoff, what's going on now? Nick Fury asked. Only then did Natasha Romanoff notice Nick Fury and Captain America. When I arrived with Dr. Banner, I saw Thor and Loki. 
there was some incident just now, and Hulk and Thor got into a fight. Natasha Romanoff explained. Nick Fury glanced around and asked, where's Loki? Why didn't you see him? He went in, Natasha Romanoff said. Got in. Nick Fury asked in confusion, where did he go in? Natasha Romanoff pointed to the apartment in front and replied seriously, enter Lubai's house. Nick Fury glanced at this familiar place and fell silent for a moment. Captain America was a little confused when the two of them suddenly fell silent. What's wrong, who is Luo Bai? Captain America asked. A very strong mage. Natasha Romanoff answered. Mage. Captain America's expression was a bit incredulous. Natasha Romanoff nodded and responded. Yes. Can he take care of Loki? Do we need to go in and help? Captain America continued to ask. Natasha Romanoff thought for a moment and replied seriously. I don't think I'll need help. I can only mourn for Loki now. Tell me, where are you going? Go to Luo Bai's house. Aren't you looking for someone to kill someone? Wish yourself luck. Natasha Romanoff thought to herself and sighed. At this time, Luo Bai apartment. Luo Bai, Stark and Polaris were sitting on the sofa chatting. There's so much noise outside, don't we really need to go out and take a look? Stark asked worriedly, looking towards the door from time to time. No, they will all come in in the end anyway. After all, the Tesseract is with me. Luo Bai responded calmly. But now Hulk is here too. You know, Hulk gets out of control when he fights. Stark said nervously. As soon as the words fell, a bang sound was heard. The door was knocked open. The next second, Loki appeared in front of everyone like this. Seeing Loki appear, Polaris immediately became alert. She stood up and stared angrily at Loki. Besides Stark, he was also alert. Loki obviously also noticed the three people in the room. After scanning around, he shouted angrily, where is the supreme mage? Luo Bai responded calmly, I am. In an instant, Loki returned his gaze to Luo Bai. Thinking of the bullying I suffered along the way. First he was robbed of the tesseract and the mind scepter, then he was hit with a hammer by Thor on the way here, and then he was hit hard 56 times by Hulk. For a moment, all Loki's anger and grievances surged into his heart. You are the supreme mage. Okay, okay. Stupid mortal, how dare you challenge the god of Asgard. I am. God. I must. Loki roared while conjuring two knives to attack Luo Bai fiercely. But before Loki could finish his words, he entered the portal in the next second, enjoying the free fall. Loki. I. T. M. Obviously, Loki didn't take the so-called supreme mage seriously at all at first in his opinion it is more than enough for him to single out a human mage but before he could finish pretending the next second the person was gone tell me what a good mage why do you have to play close combat luo bai shook his head and couldn't help complaining in his heart just as he was thinking about it polaris beside him asked master luo bai where has he gone luo bai replied calmly it's in free fall. Free fall. Hearing these four words, the expression on Polaris' face changed obviously. After all, she had experienced free fall before, and Wang had used it on her before. Although she only fell for a few minutes, it was a purposeless free fall in endless darkness. It's true, top-level torture. That experience was so tortured that Polaris didn't want to think about it anymore, so she fell silent. But Stark was so shocked that he couldn't calm down. He was shocked not because Luo Bai opened the portal, but because Luo Bai just said that he was the Supreme Mage. Wait, Lo Bai, are you the Sorcerer Supreme? Stark asked. Luo Bai nodded and gave an affirmative answer, yes. Stark. Fortunately, he always thought that the Supreme Mage and Luo Bai were two people, but he didn't expect that they were one person. Then why didn't you tell me that you were the Sorcerer Supreme? Stark couldn't help but ask. Luo Bai replied sincerely, you didn't even ask. You said you have only learned magic for a few months, how do I know you are the Sorcerer Supreme? Stark couldn't help but complain. Luo Bai shrugged and replied with some helplessness, actually, I only became the Supreme Mage recently. It was too sudden, so I didn't have time to tell you. So you only learned magic for a few months and then became the Sorcerer Supreme, the most powerful mage on earth. Stark asked in disbelief. Luo Bai thought for a while and replied, absolutely. 
Stark didn't understand. Quote dot 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 question mark question mark question mark. How did you do that, bro? As long as you have good talent, you also need a little bit of luck. Good talent and a little bit of luck. Stark didn't understand, but was shocked. No, a while ago you said that you were just a novice mage. In the blink of an eye you become the supreme mage. Certainly. Although Stark was a little shocked at this time, he didn't ask any more questions. After all, he doesn't understand things in the wizarding world, and he is more worried about Thor and Hulk outside the door. Okay. But the fight between Thor and Hulk is so big, are you really afraid that they will destroy your house? Stark asked. Luo Bai shook his head and replied, I'm not worried at all. With his luck, even if Country M is in ruins, his family is probably still there. Really. I don't know how long it took, but it finally became quiet outside. After a while, Nick Fury, Cap, Dr. Banner and Natasha Romanoff walked in, along with Thor. Judging from their status at this time, it should be because they had a fight just now and all the people reached a, friendly, peace consensus. Otherwise, how could Thor be so calm at this time? As soon as they entered the door, they saw Stark. Nick Fury was a little strange and couldn't help but ask, Stark, why didn't you come out to help just now? You are also a member of the Avengers. Now that the Earth is in danger, you are hiding here in Lubai. Stark might feel better if he didn't speak. But now he not only spoke, but also came to question Stark. In an instant, Stark's anger surged up. Help. Help for what? Help you get the Tesseract back, and then let you build weapons of mass destruction to endanger the safety of the Earth. Stark said sarcastically. His words confused everyone. Tony, I don't understand what you mean. Dr. Banner asked. Stark sneered and revealed everything he knew. Do you know what Nick Fury is doing? He's using the Tesseract to create weapons of mass destruction on Earth. During the research process, S.H.I.E.L.D. was unable to control the power of the Tesseract, which caused the Tesseract to send a signal to the universe. That's why Loki found the location of the Tesseract and came to Earth to cause chaos. The more Stark spoke, the more excited he became. Dr. Banner was shocked when he said this. He asked in disbelief. Nick, is what Tony said true? Seeing that the situation was somewhat unfavorable to him, Nick Fury immediately retorted, the Earth is in danger now. We need certain means to protect the Earth, otherwise once the Earth is invaded, it will be invaded by Loki like it is now. The Earth is in danger. Is this why you research weapons of destruction? Stark asked. Tony, don't forget how you made your fortune. Nick Fury yelled angrily. Seeing that Nick Fury didn't refute, Dr. Banner understood everything. Nick Fury. That's not what you said when you asked Natasha Romanoff to ask me for help. Dr. Banner said. Just a few hours ago, Natasha Romanoff came over. She said that Loki had obtained the Tesseract and planned to rule the Earth, and that the Earth was now in danger. Banner actually didn't want to come because he knew he couldn't fully control Hulk yet. Worried about the safety of the Earth, Banner finally compromised. But he never expected it. Nick Fury asked him for help because he wanted to use them to take back the Tesseract and then research weapons of mass destruction. So Nick Fury is just taking advantage of them. Thinking of this, Dr. Banner became a little emotional. At this time, Thor seemed to understand the cause and effect. Use Tesseract to make weapons. Do you know how dangerous Tesseract is? By doing this, you are undoubtedly declaring war on the entire universe on behalf of the Earth. I absolutely cannot let Tesseract stay on Earth. Thor said angrily. Nick Fury snorted and asked. Declaration of war. Your brother Loki came to the Earth to rule the Earth. Isn't this a declaration of war on the Earth? It was you who studied the Tesseract and sent signals to alien civilizations, so Loki appeared. Even if Loki didn't appear, your actions would attract creatures from other planets. Stark said angrily. On the sidelines, Captain America asked, are we going to let these people from the Divine Realm take away the Tesseract? What if they use the Tesseract to make weapons? Luo Bai was used to the Avengers quarreling as soon as they got together. Listening to their quarrel made Luo Bai's head grow bigger. Seemingly seeing that his face was not looking good, Polaris on the side immediately shouted angrily, Shut up, everyone, you have disturbed Master Luo Bai. After hearing the name, Luo Bai, several people finally calmed down. Seeing that everyone was quiet, Luo Bai started to complain, 
you came to my place just to quarrel in front of me. Being reminded like this, Thor remembered that he was here to find his brother. How could I almost forget about this? Where is Loki? Thor asked. Luo Bai didn't answer, but opened the portal with his mind. As soon as the portal opened, Loki faced the ground. A pop sound appeared on the floor. The next second, Loki's roar like a pig was heard throughout the room. I just free falled for 70 minutes. Loki was furious. 70 minutes, nearly 70 minutes of free fall. Do you know how he survived this period? The more he thought about it, the angrier Loki became. He got up from the ground, glared at Luo Bai and yelled. You think you are so powerful, are you really the supreme mage? You are a second rate. Amateur mage. Loki shouted while clenching his swords and attacking Luo Bai fiercely. Luo Bai closed his eyes, and the mirror dimension opened. As the dimension opens, the surrounding scene is completely changed in the next second. The villa became 10,000 meters high in the sky, and everyone stood on a suspended stone platform. The surrounding houses and various buildings are rotating in a spiral. The scene in front of me is majestic and majestic. Before Loki could get close, Luo Bai moved the stone platform in front of him, and the stone platform disappeared. Ah, there was a sad cry. Loki stepped on the air and fell face first to the ground from a height of 10,000 meters. Loki was falling fast, very fast. That speed is comparable to riding a jumping machine. But in the blink of an eye, he was about to fall face first to the ground. Fortunately, at the last second, he stopped. Stopped at, the original position. It's just lying face to the ground, lying in midair. In front of him stood Luo Bai. Can you be more honest now, Loki? Loki asked. Loki's front feet had just been locked into the portal and fell freely for 70 minutes. The back foot experienced another experience of jumping off a building at an altitude of 10,000 meters. How could he calm down now? Is that all you know? Loki roared. Okay, I admit that I was a bit gentle before. Luo Bai sighed helplessly. As soon as he closed his eyes, Loki started the continuous, jumping machine, experience. He kept falling rapidly from high altitude, and then stopped when he was about to land on the ground. Before he could take a breath, he fell again in the next second. So after going back and forth nearly ten times, several members of the Avengers were stunned. They saw Loki flash before their eyes, appearing quickly and then disappearing again. Accompanied by Loki shouting again and again, Ah! Shet! Ah! To be honest, I don't know if Loki is scared or not. But the people watching were quite scared. I rode on a jumping machine once when I was very young, but I have never been on a jumping machine with a height of 10,000 meters. I doubt that I could have a heart attack if I did it a few more times. Polaris couldn't help complaining. Thor, is he really your brother? Why do you look so happy now? Nick Fury asked. He looked at Thor in disbelief. At this time, Thor had no intention of helping at all, and instead felt a little gloating about his misfortune. This makes Nick Fury feel weird. Your brother is like this, but you can still laugh even if you don't help. Just as he was thinking about it, the next second he heard Thor's cheerful response, we are cousins. In fact, he was adopted. I can't even hide the smile on my face. If we're not brothers, can we just ignore him like this? Natasha Romanoff asked. You don't know, he actually always wanted to kill me. When we were eight years old, he turned into a snake. When I picked up the snake, he changed back and stabbed me. Things like this still happen happened more than once, Thor complained. After listening to Thor's story, everyone was stunned. Oh, that's really terrible. No wonder you are so happy now. Dr. Banner sighed in shock. As soon as he finished speaking, Loki's roar came to his ears. Thor. Help me. Hey, right away. Thor responded, and then continued chatting with the Avengers. To be honest, I hope this time can last longer. I like the way he looks now. I even want to record it. Tony said very enthusiastically, do you need my help? I can take pictures with my suit. It would be great if it could. Thor said happily. Then he shouted to Loki who was, experiencing, the jumping machine. Loki. Smile. Loki. Thor knew that Lobai had no murderous intentions, and at most he was trying to scare Loki. So he didn't bother to care and enjoyed it. 
but small talk is small talk, and Thor is quite curious about Luo Bai at this time. He glanced at the mirror space around him, and finally set his sights on Luo Bai. Are there wizards on earth now? Thor asked. The correct term is secret magician. Luo Bai corrected. Thor nodded and then asked. Okay, wizard. My brother Loki said before that his tesseract was taken away by you, right? Yes. Luo Bai nodded. I came to you to get the tesseract. You should know that it is dangerous to take things and leave them on the earth. I must bring him back to Asgard. Thor explained his purpose straight to the point. Luo Bai knew his purpose very well, so he said, Son of Odin, God of Thunder. Thor Odinson, I know your purpose, but you have to wait for the time being. After speaking, he looked at Nick Fury. Nick Fury, you are also here for the Tesseract, right? Luo Bai asked. Nick Fury was stunned. At this time, his eyes flickered a bit, and it was obvious that he was a little panicked. He knew that the probability of bringing the Tesseract back to S.H.I.E.L.D. was slim, so he quickly explained, I am indeed here for the Tesseract, but I am just worried that Loki will use the Tesseract to cause harm to the Earth, and I have no other intentions. Luo Bai smiled and then asked, Are you using Tesseract to create weapons of mass destruction against me? Nick Fury shook his head and said, Of course not. Luo Bai didn't answer, just took out the spiritual scepter. The spiritual scepter is embedded with the original spiritual stone. As the name suggests, the mind stone has all the abilities related to the mind. As long as it is used properly, it can influence people's thinking, control people's consciousness and gain insight into people's thoughts. Nick Fury is the agent, who is too deep and good at hiding his thoughts. He would not tell the truth without some special means, so Luo Bai took out the spiritual scepter. As the mind scepter flashed brightly, Nick Fury uncontrollably spoke the truth the next second, of course it's not just because of you. There are mages on the earth, there are Asgard people outside the earth, and all kinds of dangerous creatures exist. If you powerful abilities want to destroy the earth, what should the earth do? Shield needs to take measures. It needs to create weapons that can kill you. So that it can't be controlled by you. After saying this, everyone was stunned. Even Nick Fury himself was confused. Why did he suddenly tell the truth? I. Nick Fury obviously didn't understand why he said these words, and he was still in front of Luo Bai. He was a little surprised and couldn't speak for a long time. Seeing the doubts in everyone's eyes, Nick Fury knew that he was beyond redemption. He simply said what was in his heart. Luo Bai, I hope you think about it from my perspective. I don't have that much ability. I would worry about powerful people like you destroying the earth. Is this wrong? As a person is it wrong for the director of S.H.I.E.L.D. to want to protect the safety of mankind? You also know that your ability is not that great. Even if you use the Tesseract to create a powerful weapon, can you guarantee that it will not be taken away? Can you guarantee that you will not have evil thoughts? Luo Bai asked back. I. Nick Fury was speechless for a moment, as if he hadn't figured out how to retort yet. At this moment, Luo Bai spoke again, just because you don't have that much ability, you shouldn't touch things you can't control. So what if you use the Tesseract to create weapons? Have you ever thought about it? After being snatched away, these weapons you developed to protect the Earth may become artifacts used to attack the Earth. Stark nodded and answered with great approval. Yes, that's why. I closed the weapons department of Stark Industries. But, Nick Fury seemed to want to refute something. At this moment, Luo Bai interrupted him. Nick Fury, you question and fear mages. But you never know what mages face. Your behavior this time made me feel disgusted. So I decided to let you face the life of a mage personally and face the enemies that mages face. After Luo Bai finished speaking, he opened the portal with his mind. Before Nick Fury could react, he was teleported away. At this moment, everyone was stunned. Where is Nick Fury? Natasha Romanoff asked. I let him experience the life of a mage. I believe he will be very happy facing those enemies. Luo Bai replied. To face the mage's enemies. The mage is so powerful, how powerful is the mage's enemy? It's unimaginable. Natasha Romanoff was stunned. After hesitating for a moment, she couldn't help but ask, then can he still come back? Luo Bai thought for a while and replied, it depends on his luck. For thousands of years, 
The Ancient One and the mages on the earth continue to fight against the dark forces in order to protect the earth, and they sacrifice their souls and even their lives. The mages are shouldering the burden to protect the earth, but now Nick Fury has begun to question the mages and research weapons to suppress the mages' strength. Luo Bai couldn't accept it, so he asked Nick Fury to face the darkness. After settling Nick Fury's matter, Luo Bai looked at Thor. Okay, Thor. Now let's talk about your brother. Luo Bai said. As soon as he finished speaking, he had a thought. Loki fell face first to the ground in front of everyone. Thor. You said you were going to help me. But just now I experienced nearly 40 minutes of free fall. Loki roared. Thor smiled and said. I understand, Loki. It's just that the situation is more complicated now. I have to get the Tesseract back before I can take care of you. Loki. Thor. Loki yelled angrily, the sound deafening. This caused Thor to frown, cover his ears with one hand and gloat. Loki, I still like to watch you fall freely. You were very quiet at that time. Maybe it was because of two free falls. Although Loki was still a little angry at first, after glancing at the environment he was in, it was the mirror space that Luo Bai had expanded. Loki finally calmed down. Only then did he suddenly realize that the supreme mage in front of him might not be the second-rate amateur mage he thought, so he decided to change his strategy. Thor, aren't you here to find the Tesseract? My Tesseract was taken away by him. Loki said, looking at Luo Bai. Thor already knew about this at this time, so he responded indifferently. I know, he admitted that he took the Tesseract. Seeing how casual he was, Loki immediately said seriously. You have to get the Tesseract back, you know how dangerous that thing is. Loki's words were righteous and full of justice. If you don't know this, you would think that the person who originally planned to use the Tesseract to rule the Earth was Luo Bai. Fortunately, after being fooled many times, Thor became wiser. He knew that Loki planned to use him to fight Lobai and then take advantage of the chaos to take the Tesseract. So Thor answered very seriously, of course I know I want to get the Tesseract back, but before that I have to make sure you can't move. Quote question mark question mark question mark question mark quote. Loki was stunned. He looked at Thor in disbelief. He couldn't believe that his brother had become smarter. Of course, this is just what he thinks. He would definitely not say that on the surface. So he looked at Thor with a very sincere look and asked, I'm your brother, don't you even believe me? Thor seemed a little touched when the word, brother, was mentioned. Immediately afterwards, Loki spoke again, Thor. He now holds the Tesseract and the Mind Scepter, and has locked us into the space he created. Our current situation is very dangerous. He obviously does not want to hand over the Tesseract. Come out. His stirring up trouble was successful. Perhaps thinking that Nick Fury was using the Tesseract to create weapons of mass destruction, something was obviously wrong with the expression on Thor's face at this time. Loki knew his brother very well. Seeing that Thor's expression was a little shaken, he continued to fan the flames. I admit, I did want to invade the Earth with the Tesseract before. But. Loki originally planned to use his sharp tongue to persuade Thor with emotion and reason. Let Thor and Luo Bai fight first. Unexpectedly, as he was talking, he suddenly spoke the truth uncontrollably. But. I can't believe it, Thor, you have become smarter. No, 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 this shouldn't be. You're not are you simple-minded and strong-armed. You should rush forward with your little hammer and hit this mage. When you fight hard, I will run away with the Tesseract. After finishing speaking, both Loki and Thor were stunned. Thor, who was originally a little moved, now looked at Loki with, kind, and, friendly, eyes. What did you just say, Loki? Thor said in disbelief. Loki originally wanted to say, that's not what I meant. The next second, he couldn't control himself and said the truth, isn't it? You go around with your hammer every day to hit people and show off your hammer. Are you the god of hammers? Loki. Thor. It was then that Loki finally realized something was wrong. He turned his head and looked at Luo Bai. At this time, Luo Bai was holding the spiritual scepter in his hand, and the scepter was still shining. Now Loki finally understood why. The reason I was able to speak my mind just now was because of the spiritual scepter. Loki. Although you have made many mistakes, I have always regarded you as my good brother. I didn't expect that in your heart I was just the god of hammers. Thor said sadly. 
Although Loki knew that he shouldn't say anything now, he couldn't control where the mind scepter moved. The next second, Loki blurted out, Thor, of course I regard you as my brother. But this does not affect the fact that you have a simple mind but well-developed limbs. Loki. Before Loki could quibble. The next second, Thor asked Luo Bai, is there a way to make him quieter? Luo Bai nodded and responded, of course. Loki panicked and said quickly, no, no, no. Thor. We are brothers. You can't help outsiders. At this point, he realized something was wrong. He wants to run. But the next second, the levitating cloak rushed towards Loki. Before he could react, he was beaten by the levitating cloak and then tied up and kneeling on the ground. I can't believe I got beat up by a tattered cloak. Loki said in disbelief. As soon as he finished speaking, the levitating cloak struck Loki again in the face. Loki was angry. You. Broken cloak. Just like that, Loki fought with the levitation cloak. Looking at Loki wrapped in the cloak of levitation. Luo Bai replied seriously. Okay, he should be able to be quiet for a while now. At this time, Thor was obviously a little frustrated and said helplessly. I can't believe that my own brother would evaluate me like this. Dr. Banner on the side quickly comforted. I understand you, Thor. Thor shook his head and said. No, you don't understand. I have always regarded him as my younger brother. Stark Ren Gen Wei Da. Ruguo Jie Shi Wo Di Di. Ta Gang Kai Shuo Na Xie Wa Wo Yi Ding Wei Gei Ta Zou Yi Dun Ideographic Period. Dan Ni Jing Ran Mei Yu Zou Ta. Zu Yi Jian Dai Ni Hen I Ta La Ideographic Period. He only recently discovered that he was adopted, and it is normal to have some emotions. Thor said. It can be seen that everyone feels helpless that Thor has such a younger brother. Of course, it is helpless. Thor has not forgotten the purpose of his coming to Earth. Okay, Luo Bai. The things you should solve have been solved. Should you give me the Tesseract now? I just want to go back to Asgard. Thor said helplessly. It's not impossible to give the Tesseract to Thor. After all, with Luo Bai's luck, even if he gave it away, the Tesseract would most likely come back to him. So he doesn't care much about this matter. What he cares more about is, I can hand over the Tesseract to Asgard. But, should Asgard give the Earth an explanation for Loki's invasion of the Earth? The Ancient One has been the Supreme Mage for many years and has gained a certain authority in the multi-universe. So the Ancient One might be able to ignore Loki's invasion of Earth. But Luo Bai can't. Loki came to make trouble as soon as he took office. He must ask for an explanation. After all, Loki's invasion of Earth is not his fault. Thanos and the people on the Chidori planet are watching this matter. If Luo Bai didn't have an attitude, the two sides would probably start moving, so he had to ask for an explanation. It's just that Thor obviously doesn't quite understand what this means. Explain. What do you mean? Thor asked. Luo Bai knew that talking to him was useless, so he said, speaking of which, I really should visit the God King. Aren't you going to Asgard? Let me go with you. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and support our channel.